Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to see you guys. Before we get started on this latest T slash info concerning the rap mogul Sean Puffy Combs, aka Diddy, Chow, aka Dr. Love, aka Puff Daddy, and aka I'm not even gonna say that. But anyway, before we get started, I would like for you guys, if you could, if you don't mind, to please like, share. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you subscribe to my channel, thank you so much. Please um, hit that all button after the hit the bell and hit the all button. I, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyway, child, I'm sure you guys have all figured out by now or found out by now that there has been a fourth victim that has filed a lawsuit against Diddy. Um, what's a little different about this victim is that at the time of her assault, um, she was uh, 17 years old. And also, the same lawyer that Cassie used to get her um, speedy settlement is the same lawyer. Um, his name is uh, Wigdor. He's the same guy that was Cassie's lawyer, and he is the same uh, same guy for this Jane Doe, this fourth um, lawsuit that has been filed, um, just like Cassie's um, documentation, her court uh, records. Um, there's a trigger warning um, on this filing, on this preliminary statement, um, because things are really, they, they get kind of graphic, you know. Um, and I'm thinking because this girl was 17 years old, um, Diddy, uh, possibly, this is just my way of thinking, right? Not only mine, but for the purpose of my commentary and some of the things that I've read and researched and also heard from a couple of other content creators, he could actually have a criminal lawsuit filed against him because the, this Jane Doe at the time was 17 years old, but we'll get into that, right? And so anyway, like I said, this is his fourth, the fourth lawsuit um, since Cassie filed um, her lawsuit. Was it last week, a week before last? But anyway, child, as soon as I did that video about Cassie um, filing her lawsuit, honey, it had been settled. So I was like, child, let me wait about 24 hours, honey, about 24 hours before I, you know, drop my video, child, because they might have done settled by now. So anyway, at the time of me taping this video, they have not settled. Okay, I just want to put that out there. Anyway, so I read through a couple of the statements um, that were... Um, put on the deposition papers um, as per what happened to the 17-year-old, the Jane Doe, and it says that she met him in 2003. She was only 17 years old. She was an 11th grader. Um, she met, um, she actually met Harvey Pierre Diddy's then um, CEO of Bad Boy Records. She met him in a, in a bar or club in Detroit, Michigan. He started talking to her um, at the bar or club. Um, he convinced her um, that, uh, well, he was telling her that, you know, he was working with, you know, Puff Daddy at the time. He even called Puff Daddy on the phone, you know, to convince her. It's what you're reading right here on the thing. Um, you know, he called Puff Daddy on the phone so that, you know, she could speak to Puff Daddy so that she would know that uh, Harvey Pierre was not lying about being his right hand man or whatever. But this this paper right here says um she says that um so she, she was just a teenager. Miss Doe met Mr. Pierre um in a third assailant in a lounge in Detroit, Michigan, in the Detroit, Michigan area. While at the lounge, Mr. Pierre insisted that he was best friends, quote unquote, best friends with Mr. Combs and even called Mr. Combs um with Miss Doe. Mr. Co Mr. Combs, Puff Daddy, convinced Miss Doe, who was half his age at the time, because she was only 17 years old, he was like 37 or something like that, right? 37, 38, right? Uh, to accompany Mr. Pierre and the third assailant on a private jet uh, to come to his studio in New York City. I was like, what? So no consent from the family, just hop on a plane and go, but you 17 years old, and then I'm thinking, did he know? Did they know that she was 17 years old at the time? Um, because you're not getting any permission from the parents or anything. You just wanted to hop on the plane. But anyway, um, it says that before they left the private jet, 
Mr. Pierre smoked crack cocaine. Child crack smoked. Who be smoking crack cocaine? And threw t- smoked crack cocaine in a bathroom in a lounge in which he also um, ex, uh, actually assaulted um, Miss Doe by forcing her to give him oral, right? And so this had happened before they even got on the plane, uh, before she went to Diddy. And I'm thinking, what? No wonder he looked like he was high and sweating his eyes out yellow all the time on the, you know, and I, I'm like, oh, child, no, he didn't. So anyway, um, you know, the, the, the documents go on to state that um, after um, that happened, I'm not going to read all this to you guys. You guys know the story by now. But anyway, after all of that happened, um, they go to the airport. They get on a plane. This is another one. They get on the plane and they uh, fly to New York. They go to uh, the Daddy um, Recording Studio, the studio owned by um, Diddy. Um, and um, and after um, after they get to the studio. Um, she met with Puff Daddy. This is a picture of her, and you can tell that this is a original picture by the grainage. The picture is a old, you know, picture or whatever. Uh, and she kept these pictures anyway. Um, she met with him. They talked for a while, uh, and then at one point in time, um, uh, Diddy and 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 her and some other people went in a bathroom, um, and they um they raped her. They gang raped her. Um, well, in the process, while Mr. Uh, I found it, it ain't funny, but it's really pathetic that clearly they were all high. And at one point in time, the woman, the 17 year, the then 17 year old, um, in the process of, of the graping, um, he told her he can't, you know, uh, you know, get off or whatever. And she needs to, he made her squeeze, quote, squeeze his nipples um, as hard as she could. Um, so that he could, you know, uh, you know, finish or whatever, right? So I was like, okay, you're a whole weirdo. Now, mind you, um, this was before um, he started fool, even before he started fooling with Cassie, right? So uh, that happened. She said that um, she had been drugged. She said that she was coming in and out of consciousness. Um, she said after they were done um, gang graping her, Mr. Pierre. Um, went back and made her give him oral uh, again. And so uh, a little bit after that, she said the only thing she remembers after that um, is her being in a car outside of her home. And there, uh, allegedly, all of this is allegedly, but allegedly um, there was a police report filed um, back then. I don't know if it's true or not. It's just, I'm going to say allegedly. Um, I heard it. Uh, from another content creator that was doing the story on this. So allegedly, um, p- a police report was filed at the time. And, uh, you know, Diddy, um, you know, in response to this lawsuit right here, um, he came, I will say that um, he feels like he's been done wrong. And so he put this on his Instagram. Just let me say that. He says, enough is in quote, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, uh, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character. I'm thinking, oh, boy, you're doing it all by yourself. You've been doing it for decades. Anyway, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Says um, sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. And I'm thinking, but you said uh, within 24 hours when it came to the Cassie situation. But. Okay, we need to say, he said, let me be absolutely clear. Um, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. But once again, you settled within 24 hours when it came to Cassie's lawsuit. But okay, he says, uh, I will fight for my name, my family, um, and for the truth. Sean Diddy Combs, right? So really, y'all, I don't even think that he remembers this situation right here. I mean, it had become commonplace, clearly. Um, for him and Mr. Pierre, um, and and, and some and, and some of his other associates, this had been coming. This had become commonplace because this man is wealthy. He is arrogant. He is egotistical. He's got the music industry behind him, you know. And what he did, um, I mean, he's just another R. Kelly. 
up and they finna Bill Cosby him, they finna Harvey Weinstein him, because like I said, the same lawyer that took down Weinstein is coming for his throat, right? And so I think that uh, the, the attorney, Mr. Wigdor, all of this has been orchestrated, right? Um, first, Cassie came out with her lawsuit, right? It was settled within 24 hours. She got the story out there. Um, it is said that Cassie had to sign an NDA, right? Now, Cassie had to sign an NDA, right? And so now, like, there's been two, and now this fourth one right here, I think that this is the one that's going to, I think that this is the one that is going to take Diddy down, in my opinion. And the reason why I say that is because and and the reason why I think Mr. Wigdor ain't playing no games with Diddy because if he can take down Weinstein, which is a much more powerful guy than Diddy is, okay, what do you think they're gonna do to him? They're gonna be a cause with his butt, right? So anyway, so he felt like it was over with when he dealt with Cassie. I don't think he was too worried about the other Jane Doe or Miss Dickerson or whatever. I'm thinking, well, maybe he figured he'd just settle with them and they'll go on quietly, right? And so, but when it comes to the 17 year old, this can be now on my last video, we talked about the fact that allegedly there was a NYPD, um, honey, it sounded like a whole, whole, a whole S SUV, um, special victim units, NYPD episode, right? But some people were alleging that there was a police investigation, um, um, you know, uh, coming, you know, uh, against P. Diddy, right? And I'm thinking that they may have some inside information because come to find out that if this is a civil suit, right? But if the police are investigating um, the claims that uh, from this girl right here, she was 17 years old when this happened to her, um, there is no statute, just like there's no statute of limitations on murder, there is no statute of limitations when it comes to um, there are three levels of rape, uh, grape, I'm sorry, when it comes to um, uh, this situation right here. And, and, and it sounds like from what I read and from what I heard that this is the, 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 like the absolute worst level of grape and there is no statute of limitations on that, um, you know, if you're charged with that, right? And so if, if you're charged with that level of great, right? And so not to mention she was 17 at the time. I'm assuming he didn't have permission from her parents to transport her um, across state lines. He took her from, they took her from Michigan to, to New York. She was underage. I doubt that she uh, got consent from her parents, you know, at the time. Um, she was drugged. She was, um, you know, she was gang raped. You know, a lot of stuff happened to her. And like I said, this is the most heinous um, type of grape, um, you know, and, and that along with um, the uh, uh, ex trafficking as well as kidnapping and whatever. And, and, and she was uh, she was a minor, you know, a whole lot of charges, a whole lot of criminal charges, you know, can fall upon Diddy's head because of this one right here. And I think it was um, I think Cassie was supposed to come out first and then. Um, I think Mr. Wigdor, which is the lawyer for Cassie and this girl, um, I think that he planned to put her um, her, um, her case out secondly. And also, another reason why I think that it could be true that the NYPD could allegedly be investigating them, because in the court papers, honey, they mentioned BML. They mentioned a black mafia family said that Diddy was allegedly affiliated with BMF child. I'm like, what in the world is going on, right? And I was like, oh my God, right? So ain't no telling who I was investigating Diddy. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, okay, could FBI be involved? Could DEA be involved? I mean, it's just normal. Are they going to try to get him on Rico like they did R. Kelly? Like a, a whole myriad of things came to my mind, right? So I guess we're going to have to wait and see, right? But not only, oh, and I also found out today that Cassie, Cassie Ventura's friend, she did a, she wrote a, a, um, a uh, open letter um, to Diddy and it was posted in Rolling Stone magazine and um, it was, she was, she's in LA and, you know, she was saying that she was also under a lot of emotional distress um, and she's had 
you know, lasting mental effects because of what she's seen her friend go through, right? And I'm thinking, well, is she correct, Sue Diddy, too? Because when it comes to California, um, that is a form of assault. There is no, there is a um, Adult Survivors Act that is still in effect in L.A. And I'm thinking, well, it sounds to me like she fits the Sue Diddy because of what he did to her friend, child. But time gonna tell, right? So in the meantime, in between time, you know, people have been bringing up all these uh, uh, old interviews of Diddy, not only with, um, like, this one is from Aaron Hall. Aaron Hall is a co-defendant um, when it comes to either Miss Dickinson case or the other um, Jane, uh, Jane Doe's case. But anyway, honey, the bodyguard, um, I think his name is, what is his name, Gene Deal, said that the, the, <laughs> the bodyguard said that um, Hall and Diddy was sitting around naked together. And, you know, this, this, this Aaron Hall, he's absolutely disgusted. I looked at, listened to a little bit of his interview. He is so disrespectful to women. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I am not even surprised, right? So, anyway, like I said, honey, the bodyguards are starting to speak at, you know, Diddy did a lot of bad things to people. And we've been knowing about this for a long time. But even now, you still have people supporting him. Um, and it don't matter if they supporting him or not, honey. If they want to come for his throat, which I think is going to happen because he's even losing endorsement deals, there's going to come to his throat. But like I said, as far as the security guards go, the security guards, the bodyguards, the ex-bodyguards are speaking out, you know, against them, you, uh, against Diddy. Um this is Gene Deal. Gene Deal wrote a book. Um, but in this uh, this interview right here, he's talking about when Diddy allegedly broke Kim Porter's nose. You know, he was talking about that. You know, he was kind of verifying that that actually happened. This is another security guard from the past. Um, his name is Curry. And he said that, you know, he was doing his little interview. He was talking a lot about what happened, you know, during his time of being a bodyguard. And he says, quote, if I die, look at Diddy. Diddy is to blame, you know, because the guy asked him if he was afraid of what Diddy, you know, could possibly allegedly do to him or whatever. And that, that was his statement. Um, another thing that uh, Gene Deal also said um, when it comes to Tupac, um, you know, Diddy tried to copy Tupac. He said that that Diddy was obsessed with Tupac. He said that um, Diddy liked to sleep um, with the women at two after Tupac had slept with these women and girlfriends or whatever. Allegedly, um, uh, Diddy used to follow behind him and want to sleep with the you know with the ladies as well, right? But I tell you one thing: um, whatever happened to Mr. Farnsworth Bentley? Right, cause I bet Fonsworth. Do y'all okay? So Fonsworth Bentley, you guys may remember if you if you're people you know like my age or a little young, you might as well you know Fonsworth Bentley was brought in after the shooting. After the shooting with um Shine, Shine was there. The rapper Shine was there with him. J Lo was, was with him um uh, at the club. And so after that, Fonsworth Bentley was hired to kind of clean up Diddy's image, right? And so he was Diddy's right-hand man. Um, Some people are alleging that him and Fonsworth uh, Bentley may have been romantically um involved. You know, some people were speculating that. Like I said, allegedly, child, I wasn't there. I don't know, right? But anyway, um, uh, it was said that I didn't get a screenshot of it, but I heard that um, a couple of weeks ago, shortly after Cassie, um, or a week ago, it, it's been so you know short of a time, but he came out on his Twitter page and put a cryptic um, like song up on his page talking about money or something like that. And so I'm thinking, well, is he telling Diddy like if he don't give him some money, he gonna talk? I don't know. But as far as Farnsworth Bentley goes, he now has a wife and kids and they live in Atlanta. So I don't know what that's about. But like I said, the security guards are coming out, you know, doing a lot of talking. Um, They've confirmed a lot of the stuff. And this is Keefe D. You know, he was talking. He was doing a book. Now, my thing about Keefe D, if he actually killed Tupac, um, why would he like, come out and confess to that, you, you know what I mean, like, if he did it for real, why would he confess to it, you know, I was confused about that, and I'm thinking, did he really do it, or did he just say that he did it, 
you know, trying to sell his book because he came out with a book as well, right? But, you know, for whatever reason he said it, whether he did it or not, honey, he didn't got hemmed up and he is now in jail, honey, for the murder of, of Tupac Secure. He is now in jail. He has not went to court. So um, they locked him up. So I'm assuming they had some type of evidence on him or maybe, you know, it was just what he said. I don't know. The whole thing seems shady to me. But I'm thinking, so you've been around the streets forever, right? Why would you publicly publicly state something like that? That don't make sense to me. But okay, to each his own, child. To each his own. To each his own. Anyway, child. So he uh, Diddy's got that going on. Um, uh, Keefy D uh, said that allegedly... Um, Allegedly, uh, Diddy um, offered him a million dollars to assassinate uh, Tupac, and also Gene Deal, the ex bodyguard. Um, I listened to uh, a interview that he did on uh, uh, the Art of Dialogues channel, and he's explaining the night that um, Biggie was assassinated as well, and he said that Puffy was acting really strange that night. Um, he said that. Um, he was, they never stood around and procrastinated when it came to them, you know, leaving events and getting in the cars and stuff. But Puffy was real, you know, fidgety and he was procrastinating, you know, and all of this and all of that. Um, they finally got in a, a Biggie was in one car, um, and, and, and Gene Deal, um, and, and, uh, uh, Puffy was in another car. Um, uh, they're riding down the street, let's think, you know, they hear gunshots. They said the only, uh, he said the only person that slid down in the seat um, was Diddy. The rest of the, the rest of everybody else was looking back, trying to figure out what was going on. Um, they say they finally get to where the car that Biggie was in had been shot. Biggie was shot four times, you know, through the car. They're saying it wasn't, it wasn't random. It wasn't a drive by um, because he recalled um, a strange guy walking around. You know, before that, Gene Deal also um, also feels that not only Gene Deal, but a couple of the artists feel that Puffy went on to profit um, even more after after uh, Notorious B.I.G. was dead. You know, and so he even put out his second album. You know, uh, Notorious B.I.G. was only 24 years old when he was shot. He had um, his first album album has went had went platinum and the second album life after death it was released after um you know he was you know he had already been assassinated um and so people are speculating that um did he also has something to do even his only his, even his ex bodyguards are spe speculating that um, Diddy allegedly may have had something to do with not only Tupac's assassination, but notorious B.I.G.'s assassination as well. Back then, back in the day, they tried to put it on the, the East Coast, West Coast rivalry. Um, I saw an interview today where Suge Knight spoke out about it. Suge Knight has been speaking out about a whole lot of things. 50 Cent has been speaking out about a whole lot of things. You know, Puffy really did um, a lot of people dirty. I also... I also um, watched the video uh, where the psychic Sloan lady, Sloan Bella, you know, she had predicted that, um, you know, Puffy, um, things were going to start unraveling for Puffy in November. She did that reading back in July uh, and dawn if uh, she said November 15th. Uh, and Cassie's paperwork fell on November 16th. I thought that was kind of creepy. She felt like Puffy was just not randomly ki uh, uh, assassinating these people. She felt like he is stealing their 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 energy, you know, for some kind of. And she says that um, he's practicing ritualistic um, otomy, um, otomy, you know, uh, in order to steal um, their energy and separate their soul from their body, honey. She just says so much, right? But uh, I thought that was kind of creepy because how. Even if she had been, you know, watching a lot of this stuff online, how could she could predict so accurately um, when, um, you know, when that paperwork was going to, you know, fall, you know, which was, which is, you know, pretty much culminated the downfall, in my opinion, of Diddy, right? And so I found it very interesting. But like I said, Puffy done did a lot of people wrong. 
Um, we uh, oh, and then we know that when it comes to Kim Porter, we can't get off here without mentioning Kim Porter. Um, you know, people are still speculating about what actually happened to Kim Porter. Um, and the the psychic lady says she feels that um, you know, Kim Porter allegedly may have been poisoned. Um, she thinks it, it was something in a nasal spray, um, or something, you know, like in a, in a tin can, like a, a a tin that was um filled with tea or something like that. Um, and 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 th and she's not the only one that suspected her ex husband. I'll be sure. Um, you know, he's uh, always suspected um that um that Kim Porter didn't just die from pneumonia, you know. And after he starts speaking out about um his speculations. Um, he fell sick. He was in a coma. Uh, it was for either a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Um, but you know, he started speaking out about that. Um, he feel he still feels that something had been done wrong um, to Kim Porter, as do a whole lot of people, because she was allegedly going to um, write a tell-all book. Um, and don't you know that not only the psychic, but uh, Gene Deal or Mark Curry said that Puffy had. Uh, Kim Porter's house bugged, and so um, and Kamora Lee Simmons, uh, her bestie, had been speaking out on her behalf. And her house, she her house caught fire a couple of days ago. Since then, she's real fearful, you know, for her and her children's safety. So she's staying at an unknown location, and so um, I'm thinking she's fearful that allegedly Puffy may have had something to do with that, you know, because of all this stuff that he's going through. And so she's afraid for speaking out, you know. And so um, a lot of companies are, you know, uh, you know, making him resign, you know, like even this, uh, the, the, the little Harlem preparatory school that he co-founded uh, made him step down. He stepped down uh, from being CEO of Revolt for a short time. Um, and also now, um, there is a, there is a, a tequila company, De Leon, they want to part ways with him. They said that he has become, um, toxic, toxic, not only to himself, but to his, to, but, um, because of all these cases and stuff, um, he's become toxic to their brand and he wants a, a, a judge, you know, to, to, to halt, um, him being the face of the brand. They don't want him to have anything to do with this $15 million marketing campaign. Um, they don't want to have anything to do with him. And if you will notice, um, you know, nobody's really coming to his defense, you know, in my opinion, and in my opinion, because every, like I said, everybody knows what Diddy's been doing forever. This ain't nothing new. And so anyway, the, te the tequila co company wants to part ways with him, child. They done with him. It ain't nothing else they can do, right? They just want him gone. They don't want him to face a nothing. They just want to move it right along, right? So this is Gene Dio's book. Um, I've been trying to find this book. I'm going to... I am going to have to order it off of Amazon, I believe, because I want to read this book. They say this book is really good, so I really want to check it out. I didn't even know that he had wrote a book. And the Mark Curry, the other bodyguard, he has uh, he he wrote a book as well. Um, and I also want to read his, his book. I hope the books uh, are on Amazon. And if they are, I'm definitely going to buy them because I really want to. I've listened to, like I said, a lot of uh, interviews that they've done online. If you guys want to watch those videos, um, go the go to the uh, there's a channel right here on YouTube. It's called The Art of Dialogue, um, and those interviews are on there. And um, and so yeah, but as far as Kim Porter goes, um, you know, ah, uh, allegedly, and this is my opinion. I don't think that she died of, of pneumonia. Um, I think that this is just my theory. I think that it is something suspicious, um, you know, that had gone on with Kim Porter. I'm going to have to do another more in-depth video um, when it comes to Kim Porter and all the people um, that he done cheated, you know. And uh, but I just find it very interesting when it comes to Kim Porter, how he bugged her house, how no matter how many women he was fooling with, he wouldn't let her go, you know. And and and, and the girlfriend, his the baby mama before Kim Porter, Misa, he done her wrong, he done Kim Porter wrong, he had them all in rotation, you know. 
uh, uh the Gina person, the and then of course we know Cassie, and it's just like a lot. And honey, they say even young Miami is trying to separate herself um from Mr. Sean Diddy Combs because she don't want what she got going on to be tarnished either. You know, but the way he stole from his artists, you know, and I find it very interesting. Um Everybody is almost gone. Uh, only him and Abby Shore are left of the when it comes to the original people that started um, Bad Boy Records from the ground, you know. But I, I, I think what nobody's talking about, and I may have to close her, y'all. What nobody's talking about is Clive Davis. Now, Mr. Clive Davis, he has a very interesting history. Um, he came out. Now he is old as dirt. Okay. He came out a little while ago talking about something. He was bisexual. Now, we know the uh, allegedly, but that's that's what I heard, right? And so we know Diddy is something. And I'm thinking, well, okay, was he doing more than mentoring um, Clyde? Is that, Clyde, is that how he got so much power, child? I don't know, okay? And so, but time is going to tell. I'm going to let y'all go. Like I said, I'm going to do another video about Kim Porter. Um, because I was very intrigued by what um, that psychic had to say because like, she was really spot on, right? She had a lot to say. And so um, I want to come back and break that down. But anyway, that's all I got for now. You guys, please like, share, and subscribe this video. Um, thanks for watching me. You guys enjoy the rest of your morning, noon, or night. Um, you know, uh, uh, please share the video. You know, and thank you guys so much. Watch y'all take care out there. Watch your back, your side, and your front, honey, because these energy vampires are everywhere. Anyway, that's all I got. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Peace.